Hey fellow gliders, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Glide's newest feature, the Call API Column. This is also an action as well, so it can either run in your data editor or you can call it as an action in order to call an API of some other platform. So if you are not familiar with API, API stands for Application Programming Interface. There's an interesting graphic that I saw once, and I'm going to pull this up right over here. And basically what an API is, is it allows you, the client, to talk to some other platform on some other API server. And the API is the language that speaks between you and that server. So if you are saying in one spot here that I would like to do this thing in this other platform, the API would run your request to that API server. That API server then does something, generates a response, and the API carries that response back to you the client. So this basically allows you to talk to any other application in the world and be able to do something on your side of the of, of the table, right? So how can we leverage this in Glide? Well, now our opportunities are basically endless. Uh, what we used to have to do in Glide if we wanted to leverage API communication is to leverage a third party service like Make or Zapier in order to run our request to that platform and then in that make or Zapier scenario, we would have to then call the Glide API to call back, right? So that would look something similar uh, to this, where maybe we're doing something in Glide, it triggers a webhook, and then here this is a make scenario, where our webhook would then talk to that API, that API generates a response, and then we have to call the Glide API back in order to write that response back to the Glide app, right? So you had to create some sort of bridge between the Glide app and that application in order to get that information back. Now, this could be anything. This could be, hey, I want to do something in my Glide app and call Google Calendar, or I want to call Stripe, or I want to call Yelp, or whatever. And then that response would then hit Glide and we'd actually get some data back, right? But now with Glide's new call API feature, we can take this middleman out of the picture. And now we only need to leverage a simple action or a column in Glide to make this happen. All right, so to access this first, we're gonna access Glide. And the first thing we have to do is enable previews. So I'm gonna to head to one of my team folders here, go to previews and make sure that the call API section is turned on. Okay, you can also see here that Glide introduced a new JSON column as well. And so we definitely want to turn JSON columns. Typically, whenever you get a response from an API, it's formatted as JSON. And so if you want to take that JSON response and then do something with it, you might want to query that JSON or you might want to uh, parse out or run a computation on that JSON in order to extract a value from the mass data that's going to come back in that response. So now Glide makes that easy with these new JSON columns. So we're going to take a look at that in this example as well. Now I work in IT and one of my roles is to manage devices that are inside of the building. And so I have a Glide app here that allows users to check out a loaner device. And what I would like to do is allow a user to check out the device and then assign the device to the user in my mobile device manager. Now my mobile device manager is some third party software um, and I don't want users to access that software directly. So what I can do is I can use API to have Glide talk to that mobile device manager to assign the user to that device. Because when that user has been assigned that device in my mobile device manager, then all the settings and configuration profiles and whatever else applies that to that user will then propagate to that device. So I can make all of that automated now using the Glide API column. All right, so let's see how we would do this. So the way that this Glide app currently works is that everything is kept in-house. So when I go to check out a device here, I can pop in the, the user's ID, hit submit, and it adds it to a log file with inside the Glide app. And I can check to see who's checked out things with inside the, the Glide app here inside this log uh, screen. But I don't have a way to communicate to my mobile device manager that this person has checked out the device. So I want to add that to this form experience. So currently that I have right now, I have a form container and inside this form container, I have a checkout device action. And if I were to open up this action, we see that after the form gets submitted, uh, we have a set column, um, a notification and a sound, that's it. But I want there to be a call to my mobile device manager to assign that device. And we can add that 
in here. So the first thing I have to do is figure out which API to use. So doing a quick Google search, I was able to look at my mobile device manager's API and I was able to find a reference to all of the endpoints and parameters that I'll need to use in order to call that API. So the first thing I have to do is figure out the device ID of that specific device. I was able to find an endpoint here that says where I can find the mobile device by serial number, which is what I have. And you see here, this is the URL that I need to call. And it requires uh, the header of application JSON, and it's also gonna require an API key, which I can provide as part of the header in the API call. All right, so first let's go ahead and copy this URL. I'm gonna head back to my Glide app, and I'm gonna craft this as a construct URL column. All right, so ultimately it's gonna land in the log so in the log section here, I'm going to create a new column called endpoint. It's going to be a construct URL column. The host is going to be this URL, but I need my server information in here. Okay, followed by the serial number, which can be the path. And I'm looking up that serial number when they fill out the form. Cool. So this is all I need for the endpoint. Hit done. And then I'm going to go ahead and call this API to retrieve the JSON. So this could be either a column or it can be an action. I'm going to go ahead and make it just a column here. So let's call this device info. And this is going to be a API column. So I'm going to search for API. We have this new generic API call API column, which is fantastic. The endpoint is going to be the one I just created. Method is a get, and there's two headers I need. The first one here is an accept of application JSON, which will return the information in JSON format. And then I also need an authorization header. And this is going to be a basic authorization header. Here's my key. And done. Okay, so if I go ahead and complete one of these forms, then I should have all of the information for this device info in this section here. So let's go ahead and fill out the form and just see if that happens. So like that, submit data. And there we go. So now we have the device info as part of this, um, this checkout. And look at that. So we have, this is iPad number one, the loaner number one, and just to verify that, yes, this was iPad number one that got checked out. And ultimately what I need from here is the device ID, which is this very first parameter or the very first value in this JSON structure. And I can ignore everything else because I don't really need any of this, anything else here. And I just need the ID. So this is under the mobile device general ID. You can see it's kind of chained in that regard. If you're kind of lost in this response and you're trying to figure out how to best view this JSON response so you know how to uh, query it, there's a website I love to use called Beautify JSON. Beautify JSON. This is the one, Code Beautify, where I can just paste in my JSON on the left hand side and it makes it nice and pretty on the right hand side. And so we can see that now our JSON is organized. Right, as we see here, that in this JSON object, we have um, a value called mobile device. Inside of the mobile device, we have general, and inside of general, we have the ID. So this is the string that I'm looking for here: mobile device, general, and then ID. So I can grab that ID. Okay, so we can actually query this JSON to grab just that ID. We're going to extract it using Glide's new JSON column. So I'm going to add a new column here and we're going to call this device ID. The type, I'm going to search for JSON and we see here we have a query JSON column now. So the JSON that we're going to query is the device info that we just received from the API. And the query here, again, is going to be that first little bit. So it's a mobile device general ID. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it in here. We have to format it correctly. So whenever you have a nested object like this, you separate them by periods. 
So it'd be mobile device dot general then dot ID. And there we go. There's the ID of our device. And we can use this ID when we go to update the ID um, or update the information with the student information. Okay, so the next thing we have to do here is craft the endpoint to update the information. So we can see that there's an update existing mobile device by ID here, which is a put request. So this is the URL we'll need to call. So again, we're gonna to need to call the API uh, using this endpoint, which we're gonna to have to craft using the ID of the device. And then we wanna update the location of this device because this is which has the user information that's assigned to that device. Okay, so we really just need mobile device and then the location, and then we can ignore everything else, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, first copy this request body. I'm gonna copy the whole thing here. And then let's go ahead and craft that. So this is gonna be request body. You can see that when you're working with APIs in Glide, um, you need to like craft the different elements of it using various columns, whether it's a construct URL or in this case, a template column. And then you grab all that information and eventually send that using the API column. Okay, so I don't need all of this. I just need the location aspect of it. So that's gonna be under location like this. I don't need any of that. This is the only thing I'm updating. Okay, and I'm pulling this information using lookups already, right? I'm not updating the room or the building. I'm not updating the phone number. Um, I'm only updating this little bit of information. I'm updating the username, their real name. I guess real name's in there twice, so we'll use the same variable. The email address, the position, and then the department. Okay, so we have five values we need to replace. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna just replace those things. So username, again, I'm looking those items up. Two was email, no, name. Look at the name. Three was email. Four was position, which is the ID, and five is the department. There we go. So this is the request that I'm going to send to the API. Fine. So now I need to craft that. Um, I need to craft the endpoint, which is up here. So I'm going to copy this. And we're going to construct that endpoint. Endpoint to update. Again, we're going to use a construct URL column. And we're just gonna update this information with what's relevant in my organization. Okay, done. And then it looks like we need to use the ID of the device. So that'd be part of the path here. Device ID and no query parameters. Okay, so we have the request body and we have the up endpoint, and then we just need to have the API key for the authorization header. So I'm gonna copy that. Okay, so now we're ready to finalize this. Let's go ahead and return. And we need to update now our action. So under our action, here's our form container. They check out the device. And we're gonna add in a section in here where we're gonna first make sure that that device ID has been populated. So we're gonna do a wait for condition. And we're gonna wait for 10 seconds max to grab the device ID, making sure that that API loaded quickly. So device ID is not empty. And the message can be here, uh, gathering device information. And then we're gonna do a call API. So again, the call API can be a column or it can be an action. So this is gonna be a put request according to our API. The endpoint here is going to be our endpoint to update. 
and the request body is going to be our request body that we crafted. And then it's going to generate a response. Um, I think I have a column for this already. I do. So I have a response. I don't know what it's going to respond with, but uh, maybe it's just true or false or success or not success or something like that. And then we need to have a couple of headers. So maybe I think actually we need one header. Yeah, only one header. The only header is the authorization, which is this plus basic. Okay, let's make sure that's stuck. Yep. Okay, good. I'm going to call the API and then go back to screen, say submitted and so forth. So ultimately what's going to happen here is that when I submit this form, it's going to update that device in my mobile device manager with the user information. So this is going to be the device that we're hoping to update and hopefully it'll populate with inside of this user and location section of this device. Let's test it out. I'm going to put in the user information here, hit submit, and it went through. All right, so let's just verify. I'm going to head back to my mobile device manager and it should have my user information now recorded and look at that it does. How cool is that? So now we have the ability for our Glide app to communicate to my mobile device manager through the Glide API. So as you can see, this combination of Glide API calls along with the transform JSON columns is gonna be a powerhouse when it comes to being able to communicate to any other platform on the planet and empower your Glide app exponentially. If you have any questions about how I did this, feel free to leave me a comment below. You can also reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.